Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk about motion effects, meaning slow motion effects, meaning time warps effect, time lapse effect, any type of motion that you might want to create other than the standard frame rate that you're working in inside of Media Composer is called a motion effect. And in this actually three part tutorial series, we're going to start out with the basics of creating motion effects inside of Avid Media Composer in the first lesson. In the second lesson, we're going to talk specifically about keyframing, not necessarily in the scope of motion effects, but just keyframing in general, because in the third lesson, we're going to talk about more advanced motion effects where we're going to get into keyframing. So it's an important concept to understand before we wrap things up by creating some very, very cool time warp effects. All right, now, as always, before we get rolling, I want to give a big shout out and a big thanks to our sponsor, Video Guys. Don't forget, you can find links in the show notes below so that you can get on over to their website, get your Media Composer subscription. Use that discount code of MC101 to get 5% off your Media Composer license purchase. I love Video Guys. I love their team. I love the support they give. And of course, you can't go wrong getting that 5% off as well. I also want to remind you that if you or your team are looking for private one-on-one -on -one Media Composer training, don't hesitate to send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. I tailor all of the training for what your team's needs are, for what your needs are. We get all the questions you want answered to your satisfaction so that you can get the most out of your Media Composer editing experience. You can always send me that email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com for more details. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that if you like these tutorials, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share these videos across social media. We really want to get the word out there about Media Composer for any editor that might need to jump in, whether they're a new editor to the industry or whether they're a seasoned editor that just needs to jump into Media Composer and get work done. I hope these tutorials will help them and you can help get the word out there by sharing them across your social media channels. All right, I think that's enough for the introduction. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get rolling. All right, so as you can see, we are inside Avid Media Composer. We have our first timeline up here. And one thing I like doing with these lessons is talking about subjects and concepts and things that everybody's gonna wanna do right off the bat, but it might not be readily apparent how to do it, uh, especially inside a Media Composer that's been very set in its way for a very long time. Now, one thing that people are accustomed to when working inside of applications like Premiere and like Resolve is the right click. The right click for them is everything. For example, inside Premiere, you want to do a motion effect, you select the clip, you right click, and that's how you can get into, you know, to be honest, a whole bunch of different options. Media Composer doesn't really work like that. The timeline is not very right click friendly. You'll notice if I right click, it's giving me a lot of information like to show the sequence map, audio ducking to render elements, but you'll notice that I don't see anything in here about motion effects or anything called speed ramp or anything like that. So the question is, how are we going to go about doing this? Well, another concept that's always exceptionally important to wrap your head around inside of Media Composer is sequence side versus source side. What are we doing here? Are we affecting something in the sequence? Or are we affecting something on the source side? Now, in the first part of this three-part tutorial series where we're going to talk about motion effects, I want to show sort of the, the classic way of doing motion effects inside of Avid Media Composer. In the second lesson, what we're going to do is, as I said in the intro, is we're actually going to talk about keyframing because it's going to be an important concept to understand when we talk about the last one, and that's how to apply motion effects directly in our timeline. But in this lesson, I want to talk about applying motion effects to clips before you necessarily drop them in the timeline, or if you want to just take something you've put in the timeline and just create a motion effect out of it very quickly. And I want to do this this way because it's a very good and very visual representation of exactly what's going on. So what I want to draw your attention to in the timeline is actually the toolbar right above the timeline and more specifically, this tool right here called the Motion Effect Editor. Now you'll notice that as soon as you see that, you're like, fantastic, this is how I'm gonna do motion effects inside of Avid Media Composer. And it's fantastic because when you click on it, it really brings up this window where you can't actually do anything. You'll notice I can't do speed. I've got these sort of things that I can click on that don't really do anything. I can't really, I can't do anything. 
So the question is, what's going on here? Well, believe it or not, we're actually going to save this window for our third tutorial after we talk about keyframing because you actually have to have a motion effect applied to the timeline. And like I said, we'll talk about that in our third lesson. Because right now what I want to do is I want to talk about motion effects on the source side. Now I actually had to add the shortcut back into my preview window here, the toolbar right below my preview window to actually achieve what I wanted to show you here. And believe it or not, it's actually the exact same tool. You'll notice I have it right here and it is actually called the motion effect editor. If you don't have it mapped for some reason, I believe it's actually mapped by default when you launch Media Composer, you can always navigate down to Tools, come down to Command Palette, simply navigate over here, type in Motion Effect Editor. You'll find it right here under Effects. It's actually the very first tool under Effects, and you can map it to anywhere you want. Now, what's important to, again, keep in mind is that this is going to depend how you want to create the motion effect. Do you want to create the motion effect and then drop it into your timeline, or do you want to work with it in your timeline? Again, we're talking about applying the motion effect before we drop it in the timeline. So all I'm going to do is let's just pick, it doesn't even really matter. Let's pick this shot here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have some fun with it. We're going to speed this right up. So she's going to run into frame and our guy's going to chase her and disappear in about like, you know, this right here is four seconds. We're going to do that in about a second. All right. So what I've done is I've selected the range that I want to create the motion effect of. So what I'm now going to do is much like I had done when I had this in the timeline toolbar is inside my clip toolbar, my preview toolbar. What I'm going to do is navigate right back to the motion effect editor. And you will notice now that when I click on it, I now have a very different window. I now actually have the motion effect creation window, not necessarily the motion effect. Let me just cancel this out here. You'll notice right here, it's the motion effect editor, you know, signaling obviously that you might want to edit a motion effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to call it right up again here. And you'll notice that this window is fairly self-explanatory in everything that's here. But let's just go over it quickly. So you'll notice the first option we have is we can actually set our speed, our new speed, by the duration of frames or by the frames per second that we want to set it as or in, to be honest in most cases what I always have it set to is actually the percentage of speed. All right. Now what I'm going to do is just move this sort of over here because I want you to see what's going to happen when we get this set up. Now for me I know that this shot is roughly five seconds and what I'd like to do is I'd like to make it about one second. So I know that if I speed it up about 500%, 400%, that's going to achieve what we want to do. Now, what we're going to do for right now is just ignore strobe motion, and I'm going to ignore render to field motion effect using. Now, why am I going to ignore that? Because I'm going to assume that for the most part, everybody watching these tutorials is working in progressive. Uh, I am working in progressive 23976, so obviously I do not have any fields in the footage that I'm working with. I only have individual frames. You'll notice that's not even an option in here. So we're just going to ignore that for right now. Now the last two options, fairly self-explanatory. What target drive do you want to send it to? And what do you want to do? Create or create and render? Now for the most part, we'll just be creating. You don't necessarily need to render anymore. This was back in the days when we would have blue dot effects and things like that that weren't real time. So we're just going to be creating our motion effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to navigate up here and I'm going to come up and I'm going to just going to punch in a value. Of, let's just punch in a value of 400%. Now what I love about this window is that it's very dynamic. You'll notice as soon as I punched in 400%, it immediately updated the new duration and the new frames per second for me. So this is great if you have a situation where, let's say, you had a time lapse of a sunrise and you were told that you really needed to fit in, you know, two seconds and three frames or something like that. So that would be two seconds and three frames at 24 frames per second would be, what, 51 frames? So I could easily just come in, punch in 51 frames, and it's actually going to figure out not only the frames per second, but the percentage of speed that I'm going to be using as well. But again, because I don't really care about that, I'm just going to make this about 400%, and I'm going to simply say create. Now, as soon as I do, I'm going to be asked, what bin do I want to put this in? I made sure I left the graphics bin opened intentionally, just so that we can keep things nice and organized, and all I'm going to do is simply say okay, and as soon as I do that, You'll notice the preview window has changed because if you take a look up here in the upper left-hand corner, 
This now shows me the motion effect icon. You'll see it over here in the graphics bin. And you can see now that this is the same name of the shot. However, it's now been put in here at 96.383 frames per second. And if I hit play, you're going to see that she's running through the frames super fast right down to the end. Now, obviously, this is really not the type of effect I would use in this case. But you can see that this has actually accomplished exactly what I had set out to accomplish creating very much a sort of hyperlapse of her running through the frame. Now, what I'm actually going to do in this case is we're actually going to, I'm just going to clear the monitor here, and I'm going to delete this motion effect because what I would, what I would actually like to do is I'd like to actually have her running in slow motion to about here where she's going to pick up speed, and then she's going to have our murderer chasing her. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to come down to about here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to match frames so that I can find the exact frame that we're on right here. Now, remember, and just to make my life a little bit easier, I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add an edit into my timeline. Now, you'll notice here the edit has been added. I have that map to F6 on my keyboard. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. Go into the command palette. It's a fantastic shortcut to use. I use it all the time. All right. It's just easy so I know exactly what frame I was parked on when I match framed up here. Now, What's important to keep in mind is that when we're setting up what I'm doing here, what I want to make sure of is that the frame that we're going to end on is not actually this frame. It's going to be the frame before it. So all I'm going to do is simply step back one frame and I'm going to mark that as my out point. And what I'm going to do, let's see how much space we have here. We've got about one second. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come back about 10 frames, maybe a little bit more, 11 frames. And I'm going to mark that as my in point. So you're going to notice that we have a big difference between what our footage actually is marked in and out, which is only 11 frames, and where I want to fill it, which is about a second and six frames. So now what we're going to do is something slightly different inside the motion effect editor. What I'm going to do is call it up again. And instead of coming in and punched in the values that I want to have punched in, I'm simply going to come in and mark fit to fill. As soon as I do that, you'll now see that this is set to be 30 frames. That's going to fill this duration right here. And it tells me all the other relevant information. I actually don't have to do anything else other than say create. Now, once I've done that, I'm obviously prompted with what bin do I want to enter this in into the graphics bin. You'll see I now have my slow motion of our talent running. And what I'm going to do is simply take that now and drop it into my timeline. You'll now see that I have an effect in my timeline. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to press Control or Command and M to zoom in on that section of my timeline. And you'll now see that I have that effect dropped in. But more importantly, I have this little icon that represents the motion effect of my timeline. If I come back now and I press play, you'll now see that she runs in slow-mo and then picks up her speed right about there. But more importantly, something else has now happened. We've now taken this motion effect and we've moved it from being inside the preview window to being inside the timeline. So if I want to get in and make any adjustments to it now, what I can do is simply navigate up to the motion effect editor. And when I click on it, you'll now see that the window gives me more options like the ability to promote this motion effect. I'm just going to close these windows as well as getting in and adjusting other parameters in here. Now, I'm kind of jumping a little bit ahead up to the third lesson, but I wanted to show you now that once we take that motion effect and move it from the preview window into the timeline, we now have the ability to get in and make further adjustments and further modifications to it once it's living in our timeline. Now, you'll also notice what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo what I just did here and I'm going to leave it in my timeline because what I had done was I sort of created a very... I don't want to call it a very harsh sort of slow motion and all of a sudden it snaps into going at you know, the regular frames per second. But I've done this just to show you how you can create a very quick effect like that. But maybe what you want to do is maybe you want to have her running in slow motion and then it ramps up to regular speed. Or she's running at regular speed, it ramps down to slow motion as you know a dramatic part's about to happen, and then ramps back up again. We're going to talk all about that in the third lesson when we get in talking about more advanced motion effects inside a media composer. But there is one last thing that I want to show you about creating some basic motion effects inside a media composer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back to the original footage here. I'm just going to come up here to my drop down so that I can find the original clip right here. And what I'm going to do is just come back here to before she appears and we're going to come down here till after 
our crazy killer here disappears. And I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna take this effect and I'm just gonna drop it in at the end of the timeline once I navigate down and click on our motion effect editor because I did wanna show you what the strobe motion parameter does when creating motion effects. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually not gonna set this as fit to fill. I'm gonna leave it as 100% speed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the strobe motion to be, let's set it to be every three frames. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna come down to create. I'm actually going to, in this case, create and render because this adding the strobe motion is a parameter that does require a render. Now I'm just simply gonna send it again right back to the place I was before. And all I'm gonna do is again, I'm simply gonna take it, I'm just gonna select the entire clip, drop it in. I'm just gonna zoom in on it in the timeline. And I'm gonna come back and hit play. And now you'll see that she has a very strobey look to her as she runs through the frame. So it actually creates a very different, very choppy look to the footage. And based on what you set the strobe value to be, you can get a very, I'm not gonna call it a Saving Private Ryan look because that has a very distinct look and the way that it was shot, but you can get in and simulate a lot of that sort of frame shutter by using the strobe in the motion effect based on the type of look you want to create using the motion effect editor. All right, so I think that's a good place to leave off for this lesson. Now, we're going to take a bit of a sidestep in the second lesson, and we're going to talk about keyframing. And we're actually going to talk about keyframing in the scope of effects work, but it's important that we talk about keyframing in the scope of effects so that when in our third lesson we sort of circle back around to talk about motion effects again, keyframing is going to be a very important part of it. You're going to completely understand why. You'll remember earlier I talked about having those ramp effects. Maybe you're going to ramp up to a certain speed or ramp down to a certain speed. Well, all of that will be done utilizing keyframe and keyframe interpolation inside of our timeline. So it's a very important concept to understand before we wrap things up. All right, now as always, I wanna give a big shout out and a big thanks to our sponsor, Video Guys. As always, use the link in the show notes below to head on over to their website. Use that coupon code MC101 to get 5% off your Media Composer license purchase. And don't forget, if you have any questions, any comments, or any tutorial requests, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.